Hi, thanks for coming back and checking out another one of my videos. Today we're continuing our conversation about books, art books specifically. This is sort of loosely related to the same type of stuff. Star Wars was a huge part of you know what I was doing and this book came out now there's been a ton of these this one uh, was in 1999 the art of Star Wars episode one the Phantom Menace which you know came out in theaters and everyone was anticipating this I mean this had to be one of the most highly anticipated films ever and there was a lot of people that were really upset or disappointed in it I mean looking back on it I think People just had their expectations at a really unrealistic level. But um, this book here is is the best one. You can see what I'm doing here as I start to use these, uh, these little orange tabs or little colorful tabs where I would see a piece that I would find uh, inspiring or something that I would want to look back to for whatever reason. And I would start to tab these pages. So I have post-it notes like these in a ton of my books. I mean, I just, I keep them in there. You know, I, I probably never went back and specifically was looking at any of these pages for any one thing in particular, but this thing has some of Ian McKaig's design work, concept work, and uh, he is, he's gotta be in the top five of my art inspirations. So, I mean, I his portrait work, I mean, it basically, looking at these types of drawings here, changed the way that I worked, and it, it, it changed the way that I thought that I should be working, and it was just sort of like a, it was like an artistic light bulb went off when I saw his, his stuff, and, and this is one of, this is one of the first times that I think I experienced Ian McKaig's work. I was relatively unfamiliar with him until uh, I had this book. It also has a lot of this um, this vehicle stuff. It almost looks like industrial design work by Doug Chang, who is one of the art directors or the art director in Star Wars Episode One. And the the other books that are out that that have this type of stuff in there, the art of Star Wars this, the art of Star Wars that, it just is not the same. It doesn't have the same quality as this one. I mean, this was insane. The 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 work that they were putting out in order in preparation for this movie in order to get this movie created so um, this this is a, a really great book so a super highly recommended book if you can still find this episode one the phantom menace the art of star wars this book digital painting 2 which was put out by Ballistic Publishing. This was huge for me in terms of discovering digital art and kind of the you know, the direction that that was going. This was in 2008, so we're jumping quite a few years in front, but there's some just insanely awesome digital work in here. I, I think this was some of the top stuff that people were producing. And again, I'm using these, using these post-it notes inside the book to kind of, you know, just look at the process of how these artists are working. So if you want to learn about digital art and painting process, digital painting, this is probably one of the top books that I would say you should seek out because it not only has great work, which there are, I'm going to talk about some other places where you can simply find inspiration, but this really gives you a breakdown and an explanation of the artist process that are working on these paintings. So if that is something that you're interested in, which for me, this is like, you know, somebody opening or pulling back the secret curtain and showing me the inner workings of, of what people are doing you know this is invaluable information for for you and you know a lot of times like students that I come across they're they just don't have that that natural curiosity they're used to having everything uh, everything is just instant gratification and they when they want things to happen right away and they don't really they don't really want to work through the puzzle and spend the time you know they don't they don't want to spend years trying to figure these things out and then and I, and I think you 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 tend to be harder on yourself when you have that kind of attitude since you expect things to come easily when they don't you get frustrated and you quit you have to have a personality where you are okay with taking the long road you're okay with spending extra time or struggling with something for for months or years 
at a time and that and I think that when you do finally kind of get there and you you hit those hit those little spurts of improvement those little bursts of uh, you know a oh, while wow, my work went from this point to this point I think it's so much more rewarding because you had to work so much harder at it and for such a long time that you know you'll be more appreciative of that so I think when things are handed to you and they come easy you have a tendency not to appreciate them and it definitely is the case when we're talking about uh, visual art. If you are interested in illustration, art, painting, digital painting, fantasy art, uh, animation, comic book art, any of those types of things, you need to you need to go, don't waste any time doing this, immediately go to a bookstore and pick up a copy of Imagine FX magazine and subscribe to the magazine. This magazine is based in the UK. It is very pricey. It is definitely not cheap to to subscribe to this magazine. You know, I know that people think a magazine it should probably be, you know, either free and come in the mail or you know, it's cost five bucks or something or ten bucks a year. Uh, you're gonna pay quite a bit for a subscription to Imagine FX magazine, but this has I mean, every month this comes in the mail and I'm I'm looking through this cover to cover. Um, I'm reading most of the articles. The writers there are terrific. Um, they have inside information. I mean, you're talking about some of the top artists doing tutorials and discussions about art as a business. So I definitely, they have a lot of different things. One of my favorite parts of this magazine, though, is the artist in residence section, which is actually showing the artist's studio. So it goes into the artist's studio and gives you like a tour, and it's got all these little like, these little bullet points here that show you like, oh, this thing here, I have this and I collected that and these are the books that I, I, I love this. I mean, I like study this with a magnifying glass. I really enjoy seeing where the artist works. I mean, that's a, that's a huge part of what we do. So seeing those studio set up. So they have Q&A sections, they have artist portfolios, they have this little area here called the sketchbook section, which it's actually showing you the sketchbook of some of the artists. And they actually put out an annual publication called Imagine FX Sketchbook. And I would say that that is something that you should also definitely pick up. I use those things constantly for inspiration and reference. So that's Imagine FX Magazine. Definitely go and pick that up if you are at all serious about illustration, art, concept, art, animation, any of those things. Uh, this next publication is Spectrum. This is Spectrum 24, which is the most recent version of this annual that's put out. And this is basically a, a Bible for anyone who is interested in illustration. I mean, this is the fantasy illustration mecca basically. I mean, they have a, a live show every year, um, but basically this just has all the award-winning work. I mean, they, they have judges. This is a juried show where you submit to Spectrum, and if you get into this book, I mean, it's a, it, it's a great accomplishment because essentially what you're doing is you're, you're getting the, uh, the vote, or how can you say it, uh, you're getting the acceptance of your peers because the people that judge this are just the top illustrators in the world in science fiction fantasy book cover illustration they have a, a three-dimensional section but this stuff you, you have to get this every every year this book comes out it is a must purchase to add to your library and i think i have probably in the area of 15 of these 15 maybe a little bit more at this point so i i don't go all the way back to spectrum number one uh, it took me a little longer to discover this, but I'm, I'm bringing this to you and telling you that if you don't have any of these, go and find one of these immediately and pick it up so you can start your collection at number 24. So Wizards of the Coast, the company that purchased TSR from where, whoever they were sold to, or maybe, maybe TSR was sold to Wizards of the Coast right off the bat, I don't know, I don't really um, keep track of that sort of thing. They have started putting out a book, finally, that contains the artwork from the 
trading card game Magic the Gathering. So this is basically just full of all of the artwork that was commissioned or a lot of the artwork that was commissioned for that trading card game. So whether you're into that sort of thing at all, this is, it's, it's got a crazy amount of awesome uh, illustrative work. And, and I think that Wizards of the Coast is known for hiring some of the top illustrators in the industry to work on their products. So when they have a collection of stuff that was commissioned by them, you know that it's going to be of really high quality. So this particular one, this Innistrad, I think it's called, uh, it tells you a lot about the world and it gives you sort of background information, the history and a lot of the stuff about the characters and, and sort of how, well, how they're framing the story of the game and how that's taking place, which may or may not be interesting to you, but you cannot deny the fact that these paintings are just insanely awesome. So I suggest you go and pick these up there. I think there's only three or four of these out, so you, you can probably get most of them. Um, so definitely check this out uh, if you're interested in fantasy art, illustration, painting, and you just are looking for inspiration in a genre like this. Again, whether or not you're interested in the content specifically or not is irrelevant. You need to see and absorb and soak in good work. So check that out. These books are probably about 40 to 50 dollars. I took the jackets off of my books because I don't like when they get all jacked up. But um, yeah, definitely check that out. This one is called The Art of Magic the Gathering. Innistrad. So this is the last one in, in my section about um, illustration, fantasy art, painting, concept work, animation, because these were all the things that I was really into. Predating these when I was in high school, I was purchasing, um, you know, the art of Disney, and I, that, that's where I thought my path was, was going to lead, and that didn't work out. You know, I never ended up going to California and going to animation school wasn't where I ended up, um, but it's what I thought that I, where I thought I belonged. Um, this book is called Shadow Line, and it's actually by Ian McCaig, and he's the uh, artist that I told you I was first introduced to in the late 90s, early 2000s, with his work on Star Wars Episode One, and you can see here's the concept work for Darth Maul. So that's kind of how Darth Maul evolved as we know it in those movies. Um, but this book is, I, I would just say this, to, to put it simply, if you're going to buy one book and you are an artist, this is the book that you should buy. And I have a ton of books. I mean, I have over 500 books in my in my library just about the subject of art this one is the one that was the most impactful to me because the way that it's put together it not only is a gallery of Ian McCaig's work which is undeniably awesome and inspiring and just insane I mean you can just sit and stare at this uh, but the way this book is put together he actually wrote a story as if you are uh, a character in a movie and it's taking place inside of his mind so you know I don't want to give too much away in terms of what how this is put together but it's it's so well written because I think Ian McCaig was um, was an author or he was someone that was into um, acting or screenwriting or, or, or something I, I thought I remember hearing that from a, an interview with him you, you definitely want to check this out because it is just, it's just so good. It's just so good. So if you, again, are going to purchase one art book, go out and buy this one. You won't be disappointed. It, it's a little bit hard to find now, I think. It is definitely worth it if you can track one down. So this is my, my prized art book or art reference publication. So in the future videos, what I'd like to do is um, uh, talk about books on anatomy because I've had actually some people request that I uh, tell them what books I recommend to study anatomy and sort of brush up on that. Also, I'm going to go back to my roots as uh, in the comic book industry. So there's a lot of books there that I collected starting when I was really young all the way up till you know the recent past. And I also want to talk about artist sketchbooks that 
are things that used to be a lot more popular than they are today, unfortunately, but they're super awesome, and I, I have some of those that I can kind of go over as well. So I'm going to break this up into sections so that it's not a crazy long video. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Like, there's like a little button that they put on the laptop or something, and then they say click it, and then you can never even miss a video. Hmm. That's if you subscribe.